Were Harley Davidson correct in warning off Million Dollar Bogan? Is Million Dollar Bogan on the right side of this argument? Catch you inside. Revelator Al. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf. Hope you enjoyed the channel and the series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and check out the website revelatoralf.com. Yes, so unless you've been living uh, in a cave uh, for the last week or so, and uh, you uh, you also like a little bit of Harley Davidson uh, news, uh, you will have heard that. Uh, YouTuber, uh, Million Dollar Bogan, I put out a video about a week or so ago uh, saying that uh, basically he's going to quit uh, YouTube uh, for the time being, most of vlogging, uh, because of uh, corporate Harley Davidson have uh, basically got in touch with the Harley dealership. Geelong in uh, in Australia and basically told him to take down a video uh, because the video was set uh, in the dealership and it was basically not very PC language uh, was coming out of it. Uh, so he's basically taken that and said, right, okay, Harley Davidson are pressurizing Geelong. Geelong have, I assume, got in touch with him to say, look, we're getting in the neck from Harley, uh, head office or most of the company, so actually we need to, uh, can you take this video down? Obviously, all the toys have been thrown out of the pram, and this is where we're at. The question is, who's to blame here? Is it Million Dollar Bogan as a content creator, uh, a YouTuber? Is it Geelong uh, or is it Harley Davidson itself? So if we just talk about Harley Davidson, first of all, should they have just kept their mouths shut and ignored what was going on uh, on the other side of the world uh, in one of their dealerships, uh, actually largely by an external force or an external YouTuber, let's say? Really, they're just acting like any corporation out there. Uh, but the problem is this corporation uh, has built its reputation, its brand, uh, on the backs of the enthusiasm of riders all over the world for many years. And they've celebrated and promoted the outcasts of society, those who would take risks, those who did not conform, those who uh, you know, didn't want to play by the rules. This kind of slaps in the face of what Million Dollar Bogan and other uh, channels like that and other bloggers, let's say, um, not just recently, you know, for, for a long period of time, uh, have basically been doing. So, you know, they've been taking that brand, that motorcycle, which they love, and they've been using it to... Uh, create content which not only shows off that brand and promotes that brand but also promotes themselves okay because that's what you're doing youtube for so it's 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 an odd relationship one feeds the other content creators they're using a brand let's say in a motorcycle hard days and in this case i've got one myself uh, and i make videos based upon that motorcycle and that brand sometimes but some creators are so connected to one particular brand uh, that it almost appears like they are the unofficial spokesman of a particular motorcycle brand or an ambassador, as people like to call. But there is no actual relationship here. There isn't anything that Harley Davidson have put down in paper as a contract. They're not sponsoring any videos, not getting anything for it. So actually, the strongest relationship that uh, a YouTuber has is probably with the dealership. I've had my run-ins with dealerships over the years. I've been let down by dealerships Why I've promoted a, a particular product, let's say, not getting anything for it. I've sent lots of custom their way. And then all of a sudden they'll just say, "No, well, we don't want any more. Uh, we don't want to help you anymore. We don't want to facilitate you making any videos or or doing any interviews or anything like that." I've had it in the past. I've made videos about this as well. They want to go off in a different direction, and you're left out in the cold. So many ways here, Harley Davidson have acted exactly the same. Dealerships do it, and also the company do it. They've built their reputation on promoting this alternative lifestyle, but actually they are a corporation. And they know that in a corporation, in a corporate world, anything that can besmirch their name is gonna be bad for them uh, in the long run. Bad PR is bad PR at the end of the day. 
what was happening in this video so it's not because he was misusing the motorcycles or complaining about the motorcycles or swearing uh, left right and center that's got, actually got nothing to do with it and actually that's got nothing to do with Harley Davidson because let's say as a content creator I own that motorcycle I can do with it whatever I want I can take a sledgehammer to it I can set fire to it I can do anything I want because it's my property and I'll do what I want with it However, if I go into one of their associations, uh, let's say, into one of their properties, one of their dealerships, whilst they are independent, they are very strongly linked to Harley Davidson Motor Company. There is a very strong relationship there. Dealerships are almost uh, told how to act and what they're allowed to hang and what they're allowed to say uh, in their dealerships, like from the artwork, the furniture, the, the fixtures and fittings. There is a very tight rein on the dealerships from the company. Whilst they're independent, they still have to abide by certain rules. It's almost like a franchise, but not quite. So if you're taking an independent spirit, let's say, who's effing and blinding, and also who's uh, talking about non-PC culture, let's say, and saying all these things, which is really entertaining, and yeah, and it's a bit... On the, on the wild side, let's say, but it's nothing uh, that we haven't heard before. If you put that element into that corporate culture or that corporate uh, atmosphere, then all of a sudden it was never gonna it was never gonna wash. So here's the thing. So whilst Harley Davidson have built up their whole brand on promoting this kind of activity, actually reality, it's a load of nonsense. It's a load of rubbish. Actually, they're a big corporation and they're just protecting their brand, their reputation, and they don't want to be associated with anything that can somehow sully their name or associate their name with any kind of uh, political incorrectness. Maybe, I don't know, racism, uh, sexism, genderism, uh, sexual orientationisms, whatever. You know, so, so that's what they're operating at. They're making a call to the dealership and the dealership, and they're saying to the dealership, we don't want this kind of thing happening in your dealership. Uh, and, you know, actually, can you uh, get this video taken down? Now, you've also got to see this from Millie Dollar Bogan's uh, point of view, and actually all of us as content creators. You're there promoting a product. You're there by just by association saying, look, hey, Harley Davidson, hey, look, I ride this bike. Look, you know, I'm wearing a Harley Davidson jacket. All this kind of stuff. No matter how badly we slate the company or the product, we're still talking about it. There's no such thing as bad news or bad press in that regard. So all these years, Harley Davidson have been getting this free publicity, free publicity then all of a sudden when it doesn't quite work for them, then they come down hard on the dealership and also uh, by association uh, with Million Dollar Bogan. But he's under no obligation to do this. He's no obligation to remove the video or to stop motor vlogging. In fact, he could just put two fingers up to uh, the lot of them and say, do you know what? I'm going to make loads of videos now explaining what the hell's gone on and really take you to task and really, you know, hammer down. I'm also going to make lots of videos now uh, with Indian. Yes, I'm going to start riding Indians and whatever. No matter how much I love the brand and Harley Davidson, this is what's happening. He could do more damage to them just by what he's doing rather than, you know, taking this stance. I think this is almost like him taking this stance, more to do with the relationship with Geelong Harley Davidson, the dealership, than with the motor company. It's almost like he said, well, I can't now uh, film in there. A lot of my content is based upon the banter within the workshop with the other guys at the dealership, you know, the Collins of this world. So all of a sudden now, he's kind of lost. He's kind of lost that part of his channel. He's lost that um, ability to use the brand, use the dealership as the backdrop of his content. So now he's kind of feeling a little bit hurt. You can imagine that this is gonna really hack somebody off. Now, whether there's a little bit of miscommunication here, whether there's uh, there's been an inference and he's uh, really taking it the, completely the wrong way, we don't know. 
But I think this is more about Harley Davidson coming down on the dealership uh, and just spelling out, look, as a corporate entity, this is what we want and this is how we expect our dealerships to uh, behave. And then the dealership now having a different kind of relationship with Million Dollar Bogan and saying, look, we're going to have to toe the line. We can't do this kind of thing. That's why it's all come out. That's why it's left a sour taste in the mouth. And that's why you get lots of people jumping on this bandwagon to rightfully, in many ways, to get on the side of this, this YouTube uh, you know, million dollar bogan. Um, but also, there's a big atmosphere, there's a big wave of negativity towards uh, Harley Davidson as a company. And you watch my channel, you will notice that uh, whilst I'm enthusiastic, I'm also highly critical of uh, the brand. Uh, but I like all sorts of motorcycles, although I, a lot of my content is based upon Harley Davidson. Guess what? I ride one at the moment. But there is a strong and growing anti Harley Davidson feeling. It's been growing for years. There has been this kind of love hate relationship uh, with the brand. And this is like another thing for people to jump onto and then automatically side with a YouTuber uh, or a content creator, or whatever. It could be an author, it could be a blogger, it could be anything. The fact of the matter is that he is using their brand and the dealerships uh, who have a close relationship obviously with the company and who are dictated uh, to a certain degree what they can and cannot do. Uh, so he's using them for his content. Now, the dealership is saying, well, actually, this can't happen anymore because we've got pressure from uh, the company. Whether we agree with this, whether we like it or not, the fact of the matter is that's what's happened. He can't do much more of his content like that. He feels hard done by. We think it's all wrong that this has all happened, but there's nothing to stop him. Just, do you know what? I'm going to do it with another bike and I'm going to do it with an Indian now. I'm going to do it with the Triumph. I'm going to do it with something like that. That's the key thing here. You know, is it about motor vlogging? Is it about not being able to get out and do his adventures anymore? Which I think he should because they're, they're good entertainment, you know. Or is it more about his relationship with Geelong and not being able to uh, film there and do that kind of thing? I've got to think there's a lot more to this story and I think there's a lot more uh, that will come out about uh, this relationship with Geelong and also what has happened with uh, the dealership and Harley Davidson. They haven't said anything, they haven't commented on it. Maybe they will, who knows? Maybe there'll be a groundswell of opinion uh, of, of hate going towards Harley Davidson, which is the last thing they needed right now, uh, given the, the current circumstances all over the world, and also the way they've been acting as a company and the, the way their their sales have been dwindling uh, you know, over the last year, few years. So they, they needed positivity, and they didn't need to get themselves involved in this. They didn't need to go into uh, the dealership will contact them and, and tr ask them to toe the line. But they did because they're a corporation. It doesn't matter what we think of Harley Davidson as a brand, as, oh, they're motorcyclists because they're, you know, they're really cool. That's absolute nonsense. They're a corporation. They don't even have motorcycle people within the top tier of the company, driving the company. Uh, it's, it's all a load of nonsense, really. So that era has gone. This is the new era of Harley Davidson. This is corporate culture. And whether you like it or not, it, you kind of can't be surprised by it. This was always gonna happen. Million Dollar Bogan, the way he acts, the way he does you know, on, the, on the, the videos, they're great, they're fun, they're entertaining. You know, but you know, YouTube treat him in exactly the same way uh, in many ways because of monetization issues. You could say any other corporation in the world would say exactly the same thing. But the difference here is that Harley Davidson, let's say, have built their reputation and their brand upon the the backs of riders who are, are independent and free spirited creatures. This is now one of those independent, free-spirited uh, creatures who's just wanting to show off the brand, show off what he can do, have a laugh, show the struggles of getting out there and seeing what the reality is of getting out there. You know, and you get so much flat from Harley and non-Harley riders out there who, you know, never take their bikes off-road, who never you know, even get their bikes dirty. And, you know, you get slated for abusing his bike. But so what? It's his bike. He can do what the hell he likes with it. So now his channel is going to be severely affected, but only if he lets it, 
only if he chooses to do that. He doesn't have to do that. And I sincerely hope, I don't know the guy, I've tried to contact him once for an interview many uh, last year, uh, but I don't know him, but I think he should c carry on. He shouldn't let these corporate people dictate what he can and cannot do. This is a problem with any association with any corporation as a content creator in terms of you know, products or whatever, sponsorships, because all of a sudden, and I've written a blog about this uh, last week on the website, Anytime you have a sponsor for a video or for a website, or whatever, they will want something in return. They will want to somehow guide the uh, the content, mold it in a way that's going to be, you know, beneficial to them. They want you to promote their product. If you're not, if you're not going to promote their product, guess what? Uh, they're not going to they're not going to sponsor your channel or your video. If you're not going to say, oh this oh this uh, mug is the best mug that I've ever you know uh, come across, and then guess what? They're not going to say it. Now, if you give an honest, independent review, uh, which is free of sponsorship, that's something different, and that's essentially what he's been doing. He's been given independent free promotion as so many people do around the world to a particular motorcycle or a particular brand and uh, they just don't acknowledge it they just don't value or they just don't appreciate what they've got and they may start to appreciate it now if there's a big backlash against this so whilst everybody is jumping on the bandwagon as i should say to come to the defense of uh million dollar bogan let's just not forget that he's also created this situation as well. He's not totally to blame. Geelong Harley Davidson as well, as for appearing on the videos, they've also been part of this issue. He doesn't have to change. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to delete videos or stop making videos. He just has to find a way, either with another motorcycle or continue with Harley Davidson's, but just not do it within the dealership. You know, we've all been affected by this in the past. We've all had to change the way we do things. And this would be no different. I think it's a little it's a little rich having a go at a Harley Davidson Motor Company when we should know that they are a corporation. They are not like you and I. They are not part of biker culture, whether we want them to be or not. Well, certainly not now. They are just a big corporate entity now uh, who uh, produce motorcycles and overpriced merchandise and are more interested in their brand than anything else. And it's if they're more interested in their brand and their reputation rather than actually producing bikes and quality products and helping their community, then this was always going to happen. Look, I certainly hope he continues, you know, because he's entertaining. You know, I've only watched a few of his videos, but, you know, it's, it's really entertaining stuff. So why not carry on? Why stop? I'm sure he's got the support of lots of YouTubers around the world uh, who enjoy watching his content. But, you know, let's not start getting the daggers out uh, just for the company who are just really defending their position, which we always knew was going to happen, let's say. Uh, you know, because it's the PC world. We know that that's going to happen. You can't really say things. Just because it's online, it doesn't mean that you can say things whatever you want. Somebody at some point is going to react to it. They've reacted to it. Geelong Harley Davidson, the dealership, they've reacted to it. They've had to. And now he's had to react to it. In fact, you know what? Just separate yourselves from each other a little bit. You carry on doing what you're doing. Let them carry on being a dealership. And let them carry on being a Harley Davidson uh, company who are trying to salvage uh, themselves uh, from ruination, let's say. Anyway. That's it. I've had my piece. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if there's a little bit more. I didn't really want to make this video, truth be known, but I've been reading so much about it. I thought, you know what? It all seems to be one-sided. Let's just put this into perspective uh, uh, from all parties concerned. You know, they didn't really need to do it. He didn't need to really react like that. The, this is more about him and Geelong Harley Davidson and also how they're going to do things in the future. I sincerely hope he continues. He makes great content. It's funny. It's entertaining. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit raw, but who cares? I mean, that's the way that's it should be, shouldn't it? Anyway, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Check out the website, revelatorhealth.com.
and I'll catch you again. Ta-da.